Hello everyone, my name is Michael and in today's video I'm going to show you three simple methods to bypass Puppeteer detection. So method number one is to use a Puppeteer plugin called Puppeteer Extra Plugin Stealth. And what that basically do is apply a few settings on your Puppeteer automatically. So it makes it like 90% undetectable or something like that. And it's really easy to use. So first of all, Instead of using normal Puppeteer, you use Puppeteer Extra, which basically enables you to use Puppeteer plugins. So like Puppeteer Extra Plugin Stealth, you can use another plugin which enables you to solve CAPTCHAs, which I have a video up. If you click up here, you can visit that so you can see how you can solve CAPTCHAs ironically. For the first example, we will use normal Puppeteer so you can see what it gives us because what this script does is it goes to a website and if we go on that website as you'll see it gives us a few information about our browser and basically when you whenever you use puppeteer a normal puppeteer basically most of them right here are red and that means the website detected we are a bot but in this scenario because i opened it on my browser everything is green so it passed the test. So first of all, let me copy the code and create a new folder. And here I'll open terminal and let's do npmy puppeteer does it save. Actually, before I do that, I have to create a package to JSON. So let's do npm init dash y. There we go. Now, now let me do npmy puppeteer does a save so while it installs puppeteer let's go ahead and open our folder in vs code so let's do code dot and there we go so now first of all let's create an index.js file and let's copy paste the code we got from the example and now first of all let's replace puppeteer extra with puppeteer so with normal puppeteer and let's comment out the stealth plugin so right now we are using the same example but instead of using the puppeteer stealth plugin we are using just normal puppeteers so we can see the differences so let me run the program so let's do node index.js and there we go it took the screenshot so first of all let's zoom in and there we go so as you see the difference with using my normal browser as you'll see here we got a lot of reds and red means it, we got detected and we got detected on our user engine with on our web driver and some other test names and usually what you want to see is multiple green ones and that means right here basically what normal website do when they try to detect if you're a bot they will check the user agent this is the most important one and then it, they will detect everything else so as you'll see this is what normal puppeteer looks like we got detected on a lot of tests now let's go ahead and apply puppeteer extra plugin stealth so let me uncomment it and now let's use puppeteer extra and of course let's download those two modules those two packages so let's do npmy puppeteer extra and then install the plugin and then let's do does a save and now let me change the name here to two so we can check the differences and now let's rerun the program so as you'll see this time by using puppeteer stealth we will we were able to bypass the user agent test so as you will see we got a green one right here and we bypassed a lot of the other tests we failed on some of them though on web gl vendor and some other tests but it managed to bypass many of them which is good because usually a website is not detecting all of them it will not check every single one of them because in some browsers webgl might not work or something like that so they are basically checking the most default ones 
but right now let me show you even better way to get undetectable and that's to use your own browser because as you as you saw my browser got all green except of one but that's not important because it got all green it means it's way better to use so by default puppeteer is using chromium and it, it's not using a user data directory like my normal chrome browser and to use my browser we have to use two things first of all we we have to use chrome instead of chromium and we have to use the chrome that we have downloaded on my computer and to find the location of my chrome all we have to do is go to chrome colon dastas version and as you see here if we go to executable if we go to the executable path here we can see the chrome path or the chrome.exe which is the chrome program so let me copy that and let me go back to visual studio code and we will pass another option called executable path and here we will have a string and inside of, str of the string we will pass the path but we have to change one thing and that's instead of backslashes backslash we will use a normal slash and now another thing we have to do is copy our profile path and that's because i want to tell it to use my profile and in this case it will use this profile named webs dev team so to use the your profile path all you have to do is pass another option called user data dir which means user data directory and we have to make that equal to our profile directory again we have to change the backslash to normal slash and another thing you have to do which is what i recommend is not use a specific profile but use the default profile i don't think it has a difference but it's best to use the default profile and now another thing you have to do is open task manager and make sure you kill all your chrome instances so let's do that otherwise it will fail because you have already your chrome open and now let's go on terminal new terminal and then let's run node index the js and let's do a slight difference before we run the script and do test result 3. let's run the program and as you saw we got almost all of them green except of one and that's probably because we have headless on true and now we go on me method 3 which is instead of using headless to true we use headless to false and if you don't already know headless means if the browser when you run the script will be visible to you or not so now if we rerun the script as you'll see a window pops up and that's because it's using our browser and as you see we got all green but again we can check the screenshot and if we go to test result 3 as you see we got all of them green and that's it that's, that's the top three methods i use normally you can also use and so that's a bonus method i'm going to show you right now so to do that add a comma and then add arguments and to do that pass args and then it's an array and here we will pass another one called proxy server like that and let's do http and we use proxies to redirect our requests from our computer to another computer and you usually do that not to be undetectable but whenever you want to send many requests most websites will block you by your ip address so what you want to do is frequently change your ip address to another ip address and to use a custom ip address like i did right here we use proxy server we specify http or if you use sox4 or sox5 instead of http you put that and here we specify our IP address and the port number. So let me give you an example. Let's say 
162, 23, 125, and then 34. And then the port number 8080. This is just an example. I'm not sure if this IP address exists. And yeah, that's basically it. By using those four methods, and I use them very frequently when I want to bypass detection, you can bypass any kind of detection. Like, you can bypass detection 99% of the time by using those four methods. So yeah, if you got value from this video, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. You can subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get more value from this channel. And yeah, see you in my next videos. Bye bye. Also, make sure you comment down below what you want to see next.